Okay, so we're going to look at the ethical theory that is emotivism today. Let's start with a thought experiment. It's a nice, warm day in the countryside, and here is a house. But this house, whilst seemingly protected by its housiness, <laughs> is not. And an arsonist comes along to blow it up with a Molotov cocktail. Uh, the best blowing up mechanism. Um, so, what do we think about this scenario? Assuming that this house does not belong to this guy. We think it's pretty bad, right? We might say something like, arson is wrong. A.J. Ayer, the supporter of emotivism, however, thinks that moral statements don't carry any kind of factual worth whatsoever. Instead, he thinks that moral statements are really just expressions of emotion. So whilst we might use the words, arson is wrong, all we're really doing is saying, boo, arson, which is why emotivism is often called the boo-hurrah theory. So the key idea of A.J. Ayers here in emotivism is that moral statements like arson is wrong are really just and only expressions of emotion. So they're not statements of emotion, they are expressions of emotion. What's the difference? Well, a statement of emotion is a reference to my emotional state, whereas really when we say that arson is wrong, we're expressing our emotion, we are speaking about it, which is why it's sometimes called the boo-hurrah theory of emotion. Of, of ethics, sorry. The idea being that either we, we say boo when we think something is wrong or hurrah when we think something is good. So emotivism is inspired by A.J. Ayer's radical empiricism. He believes, as empiricists do, that the only real knowledge of the world can be gained through experience, through a posteriori, experience. That's what an, an empiricist is. And he thinks that there are no moral facts. He is an anti-realist. And so if you are a radical empiricist, right, and you think there are no moral facts, well then you're going to say that any statement about ethics is non-cognitivist, is in other words the idea that statements, moral statements, aren't uh, truth apt. They can't be truth. Truth. They can't be truth. They. <laughs> they can't be uh, true or false. So let's let's get into it a little bit. Let's let's look first of all at um, kind of Ayer's underlying. Theory here. Ayer's theory is what we call logical positivism. So logical positivism arose in the early 20th century and was a, an attempt by philosophers, uh, first of all in Vienna, um, in what's called the Vienna Circle, um, which Ayer visited. Ayer, however, was British, and when he came back, he, he encouraged this logical positivism. This attempt by the Vienna Circle and Ayer and other philosophers was an attempt to make philosophy more scientific. Its aim was to only allow statements that were in some way empirically verifiable, that is, could be tested. And so we have the verification principle. The verification principle can be stated roughly like this. Statements are only meaningful, that is, literally contain meaning, 
So they are only meaningful uh, when they are empirically verifiable. What empirically verifiable means is testable. Okay. Um, testable a priori. I think I think it might be worth pausing and just talking about that for a minute. I'm going to give you a few examples, okay? Um, and you just you just have a little think in your own head. Is this something that meets the test for meaningfulness, or is it literally meaningless? Does it contain no real meaning at all? I've just realised that I misspelled statements. That is incredibly embarrassing, isn't it? Let's, uh... <laughs> I can't cross it out. That's, uh... Statements. Statements! There you go. Uh, statements are only meaningful when they are empirically verifiable. Um, so let me, let me uh, start with an example. Um, water is H2O. That is meaningful, right? It contains meaning. Why? Well, it contains meaning because we can test that. We can look at the constitution of water and see that it really is H2O. How about this? Water is tasty. Well, how do we know that? Uh, one of us may think that water is tasty. Another one may disagree. That's actually a statement or an expression of taste. So it would be non-meaningful. Let me give you one more example. Water is not H2O. Is that meaningful or non-meaningful? Well, interestingly, it is meaningful because we can test it and find out that it's wrong. Because remember, right and wrong are not the same as meaningful and non-meaningful. Okay, so those are um, the that's the that's the basic kind of theoretical underworking of emotivism, uh, the verification principle that statements are only meaningful when they are empirically verifiable. Let's uh, let's now turn to Ayer's argument for emotivism. So Ayer. Um, argues that let's start not with non-cognitivism but with cognitivism. Okay, the idea that statements are moral statements are truth apt that they are either true or false. Now he says, look, if cognitivism here were true, either you would have a naturalist understanding or a non-naturalist understanding. But he thinks that both of these are fundamentally flawed. I'm going to put it in red because these are kind of criticisms. Uh, you're going to recognise uh, one of them. So naturalism, the claim that moral facts are natural and exist in the world, well, he would say, look at G.E. Moore's, he does say, look at G.E. Moore's open question argument. Um, he says... Any time you try to define good as a moral fact, um, there's always an exception you can think of. There's always further questions you can ask. And so no definition in terms of natural facts work. Um, so more produces the naturalistic fallacy. And the naturalistic fallacy says you cannot define good. Certainly not as something that is natural in the, and in the world. So one big conclusion we can draw from that is that uh, moral morality isn't 
natural or and if it's not natural it's not empirical and that's a big problem right so if it isn't natural says says uh, says air uh, well then it would if cognitivism and realism were true it would have to be non-natural but of course if it's non-natural, well then, it can't be empirically verified. And if it can't be empirically verified, then it fails the verification principle here. And so Ayer concludes cognitivism is false. Non-cognitivism is true. Ayer also takes inspiration, I think, from, from Moore's is sorry, from Hume's is ought gap, which is essentially uh, the claim that you can't derive an ought statement, a moral statement, from a fact statement. Um, and Moore, sorry, Hume, why do I keep on calling him Moore? Uh, Hume says that, uh, that rationality, facts, don't determine morality. Instead, the thing that does is feelings intentions. And so from all of these starting points, we get emotivism itself. And emotivism might best be defined as the idea that moral statements are just expressions of emotion. So moral statements just express emotion. Now this has some interesting side effects. One of the most important of which is that if it's true that moral statements only express emotion and aren't claims about facts in the world, then there is no moral disagreement. Why not? Well, Ayer thinks that moral disagreement can't exist if it's just about emotion. Any actual disagreement is actually just about the facts of the case, the non-moral facts. Uh, if you uh, imagine, for instance, a debate... Um, Sorry, let me finish writing this. Uh, any actual disagreement is actually about non-moral facts. So if you imagine a disagreement between, um, between a, a vegetarian and a non-vegetarian, um, the actual disagreement is about whether animals are capable of feeling pain, whether they're intelligent enough to understand what's going on, uh, whether they desire life, whether they're friendly, whether they have emotions, these sorts of things. Those are facts. Those are empirically verifiable facts in the world. They aren't, as we would expect them to be, uh, moral things. They're instead factual things. The moral thing is the feeling. The feeling that, you know, both of us, both the vegetarian and the non-vegetarian, don't really want to, to kill things that are sentient. Um, so that's, um, that's one of the big kind of, big kind of claims. It also, it also means that, you know, our, our moral statements should be kind of redone should be re-evaluated to things like boo to arson, 
if you remember from the beginning, what we're really saying when we say something is wrong is we're saying boo about it and nothing else. So that's A is emotivism. The idea that moral statements are simply expressions of emo emotion and nothing else, drawn primarily from his verification principle.